The second Copa Libertadores semi-final leg is fast approaching. Four teams will face off again to see who will go through to the final. All four of the semi-finalists have a great range of young talent on their squads. Let's examine some of these players. I will organize them by team. So, enjoy. Barcelona SC In the first semi-final, Barcelona SC played Flamengo in Brazil and lost 2-0 thanks to a brace by Bruno Henrique. The second leg will be in Ecuador. While it would be a titanic achievement for the Ecuadorians to make the finals, nothing in the Copa Libertadores is impossible. The youngster attracting most attention at Barcelona SC is Byron Castillo. Castillo is a 22-year-old right-back who can also play further up the pitch as an attacking midfielder. He's a quick, enthusiastic player who covers a lot of territory per game. He moves up the pitch and aims to snuff out opposition attacks. He has the highest number of tackles in this year's tournament. This year he received a call up to the Ecuadorian senior squad and has played in three World Cup qualifying games. As a developing and skilled fullback, he can stretch the game, maneuver inside and is an excellent asset to his squad. Next, Flamengo. Flamengo are giants of Brazilian football and giants of South American football, a team with a wealth of great players. Players like Gabriel Barbosa, Gabigol, the spearheading striker, and Uruguayan national Diara Schieta, the dazzling attacking midfielder. But I want to mention another fullback, in fact, another right back, the 20 year old Matheus Franca Silva better known as Matuizinho. Interestingly, he started out as a forward, but like many young South American footballers, he had the capacity to change position. Owing to his marking abilities, he was changed to a defensive role, but his early years as an attacker still shine through in the current game. He started at Flamengo in 2019 and played in under-20s competitions. He made his senior Copa Libertadores debut at the end of last year. While he has started matches in the Copa Libertadores this year, he hasn't played many full games. Still, when he has played, he's displayed his skill. For such a young player in his position, he's deliberate and thoughtful in the way he distributes the ball. He's an excellent passer, getting it up the pitch when and where needed. He has a high passing accuracy percent, averaging 42 passes a game with 85% accuracy. He can cross effectively to provide assists and can control the ball. He's an improving young wingback with a bright career ahead. In the other semi-final, two Brazilian sides, Atlético Mineiro played Palmeiras. The first game was a nil-all draw. Palmeiras have a huge array of jewels to choose from. But one standout player among many is the 22-year-old midfielder, Patrick de Paula. His abilities belie his age. He can play as a left or a right defensive midfielder, but can be deployed further up the pitch in a box-to-box -box role. His construction and distribution play is excellent. He can win duels, he can drop deep or move forward. He can read the game very well and rapidly, by recovering the ball high up the pitch, turn defense into attack and turn attack into goals. Certainly De Paula is enjoyable to watch and is part of the reason why Palmeiras are such a strong side. For Atletico Mineiro, again, among many skilled youngsters, the 23-year-old attacking midfielder Matias Zaracho is an exceptionally fine player. He can cover most of the ground in the central midfield. He's mostly been used as a right winger in this year's Copa Libertadores, but can cut inside to provide an attacking threat. He's got one of the highest shots on target stats in the current contest. He's fast, and like many of the wonder kids I've mentioned, he's versatile. He's technically proficient, he can find space and exploit the defense, he can wait to receive the ball up the pitch, or he can create chances and goals himself. He's already made his mark on this year's tournament and will continue doing so, especially if Atletico Mineiro make the finals. The Copa Libertadores is always a great place to watch these young footballers shine and this year is no different. 
keep an eye on Golimetry in all its forms to find out more about these wonder kids, their stories, analysis and more. Thanks for watching.